got to be honest, I'm a bit reluctant to even make this video because I just don't want to contaminate a bunch of water. Until recently, I'd never even tried water washable resins before as I just couldn't really see the point. They do have a reputation for being unforgiving and problematic to print with, as well as having less than optimal toughness for our tabletop miniatures. And compared to alcohol, which can last many, many wash cycles before needing replacing, water, I've heard, cannot. But when surveyed, it turned out that 13% of you have water washable as your number one requirement when shopping for resins, which is not an insignificant amount at all. But durability was easily the winner at the end of the day, coming in with a majority position at 52%, trailed by price at 31%. So, okay, I suppose a great outcome to this video would be if I'm able to identify some water washable resins that are nice and durable and hopefully not too demanding on our wallets, but this won't exactly be a straight road to those test results because I feel like this is a topic worth fleshing out and I've also got here some interesting new toys to show off. And to be able to test these resins, I have to first build the ultimate tabletop miniatures resin test bench and maybe even the ultimate tabletop miniatures drop test. So settle in, get cozy, and let's go get lost in the weeds of resin 3D printing. Patreon, 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 Patreon. My script just says Patreon over and over again. <laughs> Head to buymeacoffee.com forward slash once in a six side or patreon.com forward slash once in a six side if that's easier for you. Get subscribed as a member to the channel. I've got a ton of STL rewards for you, but more on that later. So I was really curious. Why exactly do you prefer water washable resins? And how is it you even go about disposing of all that contaminated water? Because absolutely the last thing you should be doing is washing your prints under the tap like some of these fucking manufacturers keep advertising. Resin is resin, and it's still toxic as fuck, and so should be handled and disposed of responsibly. Anyway, it turns out people prefer using these resins for a few reasons, some of which I can totally get behind. Accessibility, safer storage and handling, cost, and smell. So obviously water is more readily available and cheaper than solvents, so that is definitely a big plus right there. I can see how it's safer too since it's not flammable, but I would still consider it hazardous to handle. But not having the wretched stank of IPA or methylated spirits I do see as an absolute win. I actually hate this smell so much that I recently moved my entire washing setup outdoors and have been so much happier for it. Especially that first stage dirty wash container. Cracking the lid on that thing is just horrific. Okay, so let's talk about a test bench for figuring out which resins are going to be best for tabletop miniatures. This is something I've been planning for a long time and I'm really excited to now finally be putting it all together. This right here is the Anycubic Mono 2, a super compact and budget friendly resin 3D printer that has just about everything you need to print absolutely gorgeous, highly detailed miniatures. And I think this one's an excellent choice for a first resin printer. It doesn't break the bank and leaves a lot of room in the budget for everything else that you will need. It's also extremely forgiving to work with smaller printers. The user experience I find just does not scale gracefully with these things. The bigger you go, the more awkward and messy it becomes usually. And the smaller build volume is in no way a limitation at all if you ask me. I mean, I've loaded up two full bookshelves with miniatures and vehicles and monsters using nothing but a little Photon S. And that included a bloody Astrius. So don't let the small size fool you. It's incredibly capable. Anyway, here's two more. And so these machines have been kindly contributed by Anycubic for this project. So I'll leave a link in the video description down below where you can learn more about this awesome little printer. Thank you, Anycubic. And I got to thank Chitu Systems as well for their very generous contribution of this fat stack of FEPs, uh, which is absolutely going to be vital to this test station in future videos. So before we get into our resin tests though, we must first build this ultimate resin 3D printing test bench for our tabletop miniatures resins using these printers. I've got here a little electric heater, a thermostat, and a grow tent. And there'll be links down below for all of this stuff as well. And suffice it to say here, I'm really impressed with all of them, particularly the grow tent. This one's by Vivo Sun, and everything about it just feels super premium and well thought out. And the idea here, as well as being safe and responsible with these resins and printers, is to create an environment where I can control as many variables as possible and be able to pump out multiple different tests in parallel. 
Now we already know that no matter what resin you pick, the detail is going to be excellent and indistinguishable from the next, so there's no need to focus on that little detail. <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry. What we care about is that top number one priority, durability, closely followed by price. So you can bet we're going to devise a testing method soon as well to determine the durability of each resin. In fact, let's just do that right now. In my mind, when it comes to creating a drop test for miniatures, simply knocking them off the edge of a counter or dropping them from various heights isn't enough. What we need for a good drop test is repeatability. And so here's what I've devised. We begin by loading the test model into the freefall device, which I am calling the puck. The model is secured with a twist lock mechanism that is perfectly formed to fit a standard round 32 millimeter gaming base and embedded in the side of the puck is a powerful neodymium magnet which will be used to trigger the free fall as well as determine the height of the test. Upon commencing the free fall, the test model will descend through a length of acrylic tube before quickly entering Fimbley's Torment, aka the test chamber, where it will then smack hard into a concrete paver placed in the bottom, yielding our test results. I will now demonstrate that air resistance within the tube is not an issue. Riding upon this freight train to hell will be five test models per material. Our first model is no other than Fimbley himself, sculpted by Artificer's Mini. The second test model is the chassis of a Space Marine bike, sculpted by Dow Miniatures. The third test model is a Guardian Spear, sculpted by Lucas with a C. The fourth test model is a set of Thralian legs, sculpted by Neoteric Miniatures. And the fifth and final test model is the Gutbreaker, sculpted by Smuggler Boutique. Each model is printed directly attached to its 32mm base, and each has also been oriented to test different features upon impact. Now unfortunately, the test chamber itself, Fimbley's Torment, has not been completed in time for this video. And so this version is kind of like an alpha release, let's say. But Fimbley's Torment should be ready soon, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a whole video about the development and production of this thing, because let me tell you, it has been an ordeal. Uh, it definitely was not as easy as I thought it was going to be when I set out to make it, so get subscribed for that. And I believe it's worth mentioning here that this test is not going to be a perfect and absolutely scientifically stringent test, but hopefully it has a much narrower margin of error versus traditional drop tests here on YouTube. I've printed with enough resins at this point that I can quickly identify which ones are good for tabletop miniatures in terms of durability without this. So, I mean, this is purely spectacle and, and fun. So with everything now ready, let's get these water washable resins loaded up, calibrated, and print some models. I'm using the latest cones of calibration available via the Table Flip Foundry Discord server, and I'm ignoring the dimensional accuracy tests and focusing solely on the cones to determine my exposure setting for each resin. With the first three of our resins calibrated, let's quickly talk about the wash and cure setup for this video. Recently, Sunlu sent me their new ultrasonic cleaner and curing machine, so I'll try these out and let you know if I like them or not. But before we do that, I want to put the models through a dirty wash first. What's a dirty wash? It's basically breaking the wash down into two stages. The first stage, or the dirty stage, looses off the bulk of the uncured resin, and then you follow it up with the second clean wash to finish the job. Now, I've always had a rotten time here in Australia finding a suitable container for this. I've come close, but nothing has ever really been a perfect fit. So I decided to design and print my own dunk basket that can easily be customized with the free version of Fusion 360 to work with any container at all. And I'll leave a link in the description to where you can pick this up. Now, the ultrasonic cleaner, it worked well and it's got a decent amount of control with three separate power levels and a timer that you can program up to 10 minutes. One thing I don't like about it though is that the lid fails to make any kind of seal when it's closed. So whatever is in here, I guess, could technically evaporate. Or if it does happen to smell, it could leak out and permeate throughout your space. Also, this doesn't come with any kind of basket either, which I'm used to with ultrasonic cleaners. I like having a basket, so I made one for this as well. And finally, you'll want to be mindful not to mix up the power bricks with the cure machine because they are wildly different voltages. And speaking of that cure machine, there's not much to say about it either. 
it's an extremely compact and lightweight thing and it does what it's supposed to do. I like that it has upward firing LEDs in the bottom and the fact that it has a drying mode as well is pretty cool. I haven't seen that before on another Cure machine. Although the single push button rotary control to change between all these different settings is a little bit clunky. I think if you were getting into resin 3D printing with a nice small little printer like the Mono 2, this Cure station would be a pretty great companion purchase, uh, but I still think I would prefer other kinds of washing stations to the ultrasonic. Anyway, <laughs> we are way off track, sorry. Let's get on to the test results now. Thank you, Sunlu. Okay, so we're only three resins in so far, and it is a bloody massacre. Sunlu, Anycubic, and Elegoo water washables all have a 100% failure rate on the first drop for every single test model. So I decided that I'd be dropping all the models from one meter, and yeah, they are just absolutely getting annihilated on that first drop. Now I do have three more water washable resins here to send down range, and these ones I am a lot more hopeful for, but given how absolutely punishing this test has proven to be so far, I think we need some benchmarks, some known good resins to throw into the mix here that we can then compare against. Because if I try dropping something I know is a decent resin, and it also gets destroyed by this test, then I can't draw any kind of helpful distinction between them. So to gain a better understanding of my new testing device here, I went ahead and printed up Anycubic Tough Resin Ultra, Sunlu Toughness, and Sunlu ABS-like. To start things off, I think the Sunlu ABS-like makes the most sense, because if this also has a 100% failure rate, then I know my test is useless, because this stuff is fine for miniatures. <laughs> Shit. So much to my dismay. All the Sunlu ABS-like test pieces broke on their first drop also. So I'm thinking since the puck has a bunch of extra mass and the mini is fixed upon a single axis on impact, that the fall from one meter is just way too much. Even for a decent resin like Sunlu ABS-like, which means we can't really tell it apart from the more brittle resins with the test in this current form. I think the only way forward from here is either a complete redesign, which to be honest isn't very appealing, or I can just lower the drop height to compensate for the extra constraints and forces placed on these test pieces. Which means I need to go and print off my first three resins again. Fuck's sake. Much faffing about later and I have a whole new retinue of test models for each resin and my drop test rigged at its new height of 50 centimeters. So I slashed it in half. Either we get useful test data at this height, or we abandon this for another day because my time and patience for this project is just about spent. Alrighty, well our test really effectively demonstrates the amazing impact resistance of any cubic tough resin ultra and Sunlu toughness, with both of these resins able to survive multiple drops before failure, with some models not failing at all even when dropped five times in a row. But yeah, it completely fails to draw any useful distinction between pretty good resins and absolute garbage tier resins. At least with the current scoring technique anyway. For example, Sunlu ABS-like, which is a pretty decent resin for minis that can normally handle a bit of rough and tumble, only scored a single pass on its first set of drops. So by this measure, when compared against the water washable counterparts, it doesn't look that much better, when in reality the difference does matter because those first three water washables are all extremely brittle, and I don't recommend any of them at all for miniatures. As for the other three, Nova 3D Mecha Washable, yes that's 3D printed Wargamer, 
and Aurorum Water Washable, which, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is Jamhee 3D Water Washable, right? I mean, that's what I was trying to find for this video, but this is all I could find locally, and it says it's a Jamhee 3D resin right there on the bottle, so pretty sure this is the one, just relabeled, but then maybe not since it was pretty brittle, and I have heard good things about the Jamhee 3D Water Washable, so dunno. Wargamer had a little bit of give in it before also failing, and the Nova 3D Mecha Washable Resin actually really impressed me. I think this is the one to get if you're after a water washable resin that's both a little bit durable and not too costly. But ultimately, nothing can touch the Tough Resins, Anycubic Tough Resin Ultra, pricey but just insane performance, and Sunlu Toughness as well, which last I checked is about half the cost and just as tough. So for value, Man, you really just can't beat Sunlu, can you? I am aware though that some of you prefer a bit more stiffness to your minis, as you do risk fielding an army of limp swords and rifles if you go this route. But they have to be some really dainty, pointy bits to have that issue. But yeah, if that's the case for you, and you do need a water washable resin, I'd say Nova 3D Mecha Washable and Wargamer are your best options. But yeah, unless you're willing to give up water washable, it looks like it's pretty slim pickings for durable and cost effective options here, at least so far as everything I've tried for this video. Now I've just got to figure out how to dispose of all this contaminated water. It seems like there's two good options. One of them is you take it outside and you dump it in some sort of container and you just let it evaporate over a really, really long period of time. Or you try and find out if you have some sort of local toxic waste processing facility nearby and you take it to them. But yeah, whatever you do, don't dump this stuff down the drain, please. Oh, and before I forget, water that's been contaminated with resin actually smells awful as well. So I did end up moving this wash and cure setup outdoors to join my alcohol setup as well, because although the smell isn't as sharp as the alcohol smell, it's still really unpleasant. Yeah, I, I thought that was worth mentioning. Oh, and the drying time for these resins is awful compared to alcohol. It just takes so long to post-process water washable minis because, yeah, they just take forever to dry, even with a fan. So, yeah, I have not been converted today. <laughs> I'm going to stick to my alcohol washing. Before you click off, I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't first ask you to kindly comment and tell me how I can improve the drop test or the scoring system or both to get more useful data for everyone. Comments really help me out, especially if you're new here too. I think that sends a really strong signal to YouTube that I did a good thing. You can find a link to a spreadsheet with all the drop results down in the video description, as well as links to everything else that you saw in this video. Some of those will be affiliate links and do help support this channel. Speaking of which, are you subscribed yet? You'll want to get subscribed if you're not, because we are not done with this resin testing yet. I am bloody determined to figure this out and bring you the best miniatures-centric resin information on this whole bloody platform. Also, Patreon, 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 Patreon. Come join me on Patreon or buy me a coffee and join all these legends whose names are flying by right now. We have an absolute shitload of STLs so you don't get nothing for your money. And our Discord server is hell. I, I mean swell. <laughs> it's a swell place to be. And before you go, you know who makes really fucking cool miniatures? Arcane Whiskers, Artificers Mini, Atlan Forge, Dungeons and Dreadnoughts, Imp3D, Sion, Lucas with a C, Moid, Scouts of the Studio, Tractor Minis, Synergy Studio, and Toady Design. All of these artists are the coolest artists in the whole miniatures 3D printing sphere, whatever this is. Go show them some love. There'll be links for them in the description as well. Cheers, bye.